Hi, uh, this is the, the last part of our introductory course of geostatistics. And uh, it is about uh, the <coughs> spatial interpolation or spatial inference, which is called in geostatistics Kriging, the Kriging methods. Uh, in short, what, uh, what I'm going to see is the way how to capitalize uh, all the knowledge we have about the spatial patterns of the phenomenon, spatial phenomenon of a natural resource, to capitalize this knowledge of uh, value grams, co spatial covariance, and so on, to build a good spatial interpolator, which is the good creating model. Okay. So, but uh, in this lecture, we are going to see the main properties that uh, this creating uh, model or Kriging interpolator should have. This is the last section of this course, just statistical spatial inference or the Kriging models. And uh, in this first model, we are going to see the properties of linear models we need for the spatial inference. Here comes again the important question. Uh, why do we need the model of the reality? And the answer, again, is simple. From a natural resource, for example, a contaminated soil or habitat of migratory birds in wet areas, forest, for example, this one with infectious uh, diseases, con contaminated sediments in a river, just few samples are the only knowledge you usually have from these resources. Hence, we need a model to visualize uh, and to understand the spatial dispersion of main characteristics in order to evaluate and to manage the given resource and critical issues related to it. That's the answer. Uh, let me tell you a true story. Once upon a time, Italian bi biologist called Nimis uh, took the samples he had about lichens biodiversity and create a map of the spatial dispersion of this lichens biodiversity with, with, uh, which uh, some of you know is related with the air quality more lichen species better is the air quality of the region one day yeah, he, uh, the Nimish, he watched a conference where a doctor named Kislagi has shown a map of the same region about dispersion of the lung cancer occurrence. This one. And the resemblances between both maps were amazing, with extremely good relationship. And a paper in Nature was the beginning of a good relationship between them, I presume. But uh, this happy story, <coughs> and this happy end story, happened just because he, which one of both scientists had made a model, a model of the dispersion of the two variables, air pollution or liquid biodiversity and lung cancer. Let us, uh, let's, let, us, let us have a quick look to other examples. Spatial dispersion of SO2 and O3 concentrations in Portugal. Given those samples, uh, <clears throat> we uh, we could uh, we could make those the dispersion maps, which allow to identify the critical areas of air quality and to manage the sources of this one, the sources of those critical concentration. For example, another example: spatial model of the vitality of a cork tree. Uh, cork tree forest, a categorical variable in this case, uh, made with uh, field observations, those ones, that <coughs> this, uh, this map, this model, allowed to control critical areas and wrong soil treatments. Or the spatial maps of this migratory bird concentration at different periods allow to manage the temporal trend and critical areas to control the abundance of these species. Or the special maps of a sediment contamination in a, in a Tejo River, where the first step, the, 
those models were the first step for the decontamination and recover of a degraded area, even the rise, uh, what is now an emblematic urbanistic example of Lisbon, those maps here. And of course, mining and petroleum applications. No one could manage the resources and reserves uh, just with sample data, borrowed data, well data without a model of the grades, petrophysical properties, and so on. Now, in, in short, we can say that geostatistics is just a set of tools to transform the space of discrete and sparse knowledge of reality, the sample data, into a more comprehensive model of the known reality. Now, special inference and special interpolators. Let us start by the deterministic interpolators, the ones used in computer graphics, scientific visualization, computer animation, and so on. The point of the, in this practice is to uh, interpolate, uh, <coughs> interpolate the surface between the control points, those ones here, which are equivalent to our sample data. Now, compared with the natural phenomena, the main difference is when we interpolate here, uh, we, <coughs> we know in advance what we are going to interpolate. The nose of the warrior, the legs of this green fellow, and so on. In short, there is no uncertainty. But note that uh, identical deterministic models can sometimes be used uh, in just few situations of natural phenomena, where they are quite homogeneous and uh, with low uncertainty, like for example the top, uh, bottom and thickness of some sedimentary structures. But in most of the, of the situations of natural phenomena, we want to solve the following problem based on a set of discrete uh, data one wish to interpolate different parts of our unknown reality top and bottom of main geological formations or the spatial dispersion of very heterogeneous properties like porosity, permeability and so on. Uh, let us take the form of our linear interpolator. Uh, given a set of sample values z x of i of an attribute z uh, at sample locations x i i equal 1 to m. Given those samples, the objective is to estimate, to interpolate the value z x of, of 0 of the same of an ensemble, ensemble location of the same attribute z at an ensemble point located at x 0 based on a linear combination of the set of neighborhood values z x of i is one. Uh, so the weights uh, represent <coughs> the not uh, not that the, the weights represent the influence of the sample x y to achieve the known value x zero. Now let us take the form of a linear estimator. Given, uh, given a set of samples, let us uh, start with the laser, given a set of sample values z, x of i, of attribute z, at the spatial location x, y, those ones here, i equal 1 to n. The objective is to estimate the value z of x0 of the same attribute z but at the ensemble point located at x0 based on a linear combination of the set of neighborhood sample values x of i. So it can take this form of a weighted average with the weights are the, those lambdas here. Note that the, the weight lambda y represent the influence of the sample x, y to achieve the unknown value x, zero. Now let's see some classical deterministic models to solve that interpolation exercise. 
and that let's let us start by the simplest one the polygons of influence so the interpolator zx0 aster is equal to the nearest neighbor of zxy uh, as there is just one sample value the weight of this sample is one for sure this is equivalent to the partition of the space in a set of polygons of Voronoi polygons centered at each sample xy hence the known value at any location for example this one takes the value of the center of the polygon uh, to which x0 belongs so this is a very simple method and um, very common and very used in information geographical systems but uh, is not very common in nerd science so the, sim the, the, the advantage is the simplicity of implementation well, the, 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 the drawbacks are high discontinuity between polygons, as you can see, can take the, the, all those points, take the same value. Now let us move to a little bit more complex estimate that accounts for three neighborhood samples. Now, if we divide the space in triangles, the Delaunay triangulation, each vertice is defined by one sample value. Yeah. Uh, so any value x0 in the middle of the triangle, inside the triangle, sorry, is equal to the linear combination, <coughs> linear combination of the three vertice values, like this one here. There are uh, several ways to solve this with this uh, this pro this uh, problem. One uh, one uh, one of them is very simple, uh, and uh, the weights lambda are proportional to the triangle area opposite to the vertice x y like this one so this vertice here takes the area uh, the opposite triangle as as the weight of x3 okay let's just move to a little bit more complex estimator that accounts for the three neighborhood samples if we divide the space in triangles the only triangulation uh, it is called each vertice is defined by one sample value, like this one here. So any value, uh, a known value x0 inside the triangle is equal to the linear combination uh, of the three vertice values. Now, one way to calculate uh, the weights, those lambdas here, is this one. Uh, the weights lambda i Proportion, uh, are proportional to the triangle area opposite to the vertice z x of i. For example, the weight of this sample x3 will be this uh, <coughs> proportional to this area here of this triangle. The weight of x2, this triangle here, and so on. So the advantages of this method keeps on the same as the previous one, simplicity of implementation. But uh, the, the drawbacks are identically the same. High discontinuity by, between polygons, in this, case, in this case between triangles. Now, if uh, we expand the number of number of samples, we found uh, this inverse square distance methods of interpolation. This is a very simple method that accounts for all number of sample values. And the weights are the inverse uh, of the square distance between the samples here yeah, and the point to be interpolated or estimated. This is a particular case of the inverse of power distance, but the most commonly used method. So, uh, <clears throat> they, it's uh, quite simple, easy implementation, but there's one particular drawback that the other met previous methods didn't have. For example, the sample that it is uh, that it is not a declustering method. For example, this sample here, x6, has exactly the same weight of x2 and x3 individually, uh, <clears throat> because they are at the same distance, about the same distances, and but and uh, that's why we we said that it is not a declustering method. And this is important because you are dealing with uh, spatial correlated variables, as you could see in the, the previous section. 
the vague Grimes calculations and so on. So, in short, let's see, the deterministic models, the, the advantage of those deterministic models that uh, you have seen is the uh, easy implementation, fast interpolation methods appropriated when uncertainty is not an issue, which means homogeneous phenomena, to estimate any value, z, x, zero, the nearest uh, values are more weighted, except for the inverse of power distance method, the clusters of sample values are less weighted in the estimation of z of a, z x zero. <clears throat> so the drawbacks, drawbacks, uh, we can just say that the influence of each sample is determined by just geometric criteria, usually the Euclidean distance from the sample to the point to be estimated. No structural information, spatial continuity patterns as revealed by the very grounds, covariance and so on is involved. No uncertainty is evaluated. Now, hence, we do have some basis to establish what we wish uh, from a geostatistical spatial interpolator or estimator. The weights lambda alpha should reflect the structural proximity of the samples z x of alpha to the point z x zero and also at the same time should have uh, a declustering effect on the cluster of samples so let me give you a toy example what those two properties that we wish just statistical estimation have Structural proximity of the samples to the point. For example, take this example of three, just three samples, x1, x2, and x3, three different values. If, uh, and this is the point we wish to uh, interpolate. If they are at the, the same distance and assuming uh, the same variogram in all directions, what you wish, what we, we wish at, is that uh, the, the, all the samples have the same weight. And as a result, for example, in this case, is uh, this kind of uh, interpolator. Uh, the interpolator value of the point x0 is 39. But if we move, if we move x2, to closest to the to the point to be estimated, what we wish is this the sample value here and more weight than those two that is far more far from the point to be estimated. For example, this this sample value should have, for example, the the weight of 0.666, while the other ones should have individually 0.17. And as a result, the estimated value got the, va the, the, the value 55 more than the previous one because the sample value is higher than those two. So the second property is the clustering effect of samples. The same, same sample values, same distance, and the same estimator of the previous example. But for example, let's move this one to the, close to the sample x, z x1. So we got here a cluster. So a, as they are correlated, there's some special correlation between, uh, between them, the information, there's some kind of overlapping about the information that we got, we'll get from those two samples to estimate this value. So what we wish is individual, those two samples should have less weight than this isolated sample. For example, like this one. The isolated sample, which is ZX2, has 0.46, and those, this cluster of samples uh, will have the weight of 0.27. So as a result, the estimated value of ZX0 will be 45, okay? higher than this one, again, because this is the highest sample value got the highest uh, weight. Just to finish uh, this lecture, I would like to 
to to emphasize the the some some references, of course the classical one from his accent Srivastava. Also, he can you, you have the the Gouverts, the Pierre Gouverts book just as for natural resources evaluations, is a little bit more advanced than this one, and for the <coughs> the Portuguese readers you have this one just to give para as that definitely.